If history proves true, the Aggies are going to have an elite rushing attack under Coach Petrino. You are Locked On Aggies, your daily podcast on the Texas A&M Aggies, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome on in the Locked on Aggies. I'm your host, Andrew Stefaniak. Thanks for making Locked on Aggies your first listen every single day. These last few days, we've talked a little bit about the passing attack, a little bit about the receivers, some about the offensive line. We haven't gotten much into this running back room and what the rushing attack is going to look like this season for the Aggies. So the first thing I did when kind of researching how is this rushing attack going to be is, is thought to myself, well, I wonder what Coach Petrino has done historically with his play calling when it comes to running backs and rushing attacks and that kind of stuff. So I looked up some of his best performances as an off. I mean, as a, as a play caller, offensive coordinator and a few of his best seasons. And I pulled the numbers, which are going to, is going to get Aggie fans excited. So all four of these numbers I have here are from his time at Louisville, but they're over a very widespread time of, you know, a wide, time span you'll see what i'm talking about here in a minute so but what these numbers are are the louisville's yards per game some of the best numbers when coach Trino was the coach there 2017 of course lamar jackson was the quarterback the cardinals had 545 yards per game 2004 the cardinals had 539 yards per game 2016 532.7 yards per game and 2003, 488.6 yards per game. Those numbers. Now I get it. It's the ACC. It's not the. It's not the um, SEC. But my goodness, that's some offense right there. Those numbers, especially after what Aggie fans had to go through last year, where the offense didn't produce much. Who? What a game where where Texas A&M put, puts up 545 yards this year be ever so exciting, and. It's going to happen. I, I fully believe. And so let's break down some of these numbers. I'm going to tell you why I think that this Texas A&M football team is going to be able to run the ball really efficiently thanks to the way Coach Rufino does things. So that team in 2017, of course, Lamar Jackson was, was running the rock and passing the rock. But four running backs on that team had 20 or more carries. The reason I think that's substantial, some might say, well, 20 carries, yeah, but Jackson had a hundred, a thousand six hundred rushing yards. You know, he 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 took a big a big piece of that pie, not leaving a lot for these other guys. So, uh, you know, having a lot of guys over this amount of carries shows Petrino likes to spread the ball around. That year too, you had a running back with five hundred yards, running back with four hundred, a couple with two hundred. So people are getting touches, people are getting their carries. This season is the one that really sticks out to me and, and I think can kind of be similar to what we might see from the Aggies this year, although it was 2004. Now, one more point I want to make before I get into this is I think another exciting thing about these numbers is seeing that in 2003 and four, Coach Trino's offense was elite, and 2016 and 17, Coach Trino's offense was elite. Sometimes we'll see a coach has an offense that they come up with and it works for four or five years and it's really great. And then people start to pick up on it. And that's the end of it. Petrino's offense has not been that way. Look at these numbers. You got elite numbers in 2004 and elite numbers in 2017. And that's what I'm talking about. Well, I was talking about the wide time span that these numbers spread across, which is what should be exciting for Texas A&M fans because coach Trino is not a thing of the past. Coach Trino is a thing of the past, current and future. So, but now back to this 2004 season that I think is a great talking point potentially for this 2023 Aggie rushing attack. Once again, four guys with 20 or more carries, but more impressive than that is the yards of those four guys that had 20 or more carries. 938 yards for the leading rusher on that team. 734 for the second leading rusher. 373, 347. Wow, those are some great numbers for a running back room. And with the elite running back room the Aggies currently have, that lets, makes you wonder, a lot of these guys are going to get a lot of carries. 
So now let's break down this Aggie running back room and kind of see how does, does these two things correspond with one another. Mari Daniels, Le'Veon Moss, Ruben Owens, those are going to be the three main guys toting the rock for the Aggies this season. Of course, Daniels and Moss, talented players from previous teams that were on the team previous to the season. Ruben Owens, the five-star freshman. I'm a big Ruben Owens fan. Those of you that have everydayers that have listened this first week of me doing this show, you know I'm a Ruben Owens fan. I'll be very open with that because he is awesome. But he is young, and I think to start the season, Amari Daniels and Le'Veon Moss are going to kind of be the guys. I think as Ruben Owens gets his footing in the college in college football, I think Ruben Owens can take over this backfield. Now, I want to be very clear. When I say take over this backfield, all these guys are going to have, have relevancy regardless of who the guy or the guys are is. <laughs> so let's say Daniel starts the year and he opens up the first game of the year and he gets 16 carries, 15 carries. I think a game like that, you're going to see Moss get seven and Owens get three or four, and you might see these numbers change and fluctuate and move, but a lot of guys are going to get a lot of work. And so, you know, that's what I'm trying to push. If, if, if Owens becomes the guy, I still believe that these other guys are going to be used a lot in for this football team, for Coach Trino's offense, what he's trying to get done in College Station. So... You know, you lose Devon A Chain. A Chain's awesome. I can't wait to get him on a fantasy football roster. That's there's your sleeper. There's your Andrews Faniak fantasy football sleeper of the day advice. Although I'm sure all Aggie fans are going to be stoked to put him on your team. But there you go. So Amari Daniels, Le'Veon Moss, Ruben Owens, all of these guys are going to have a lot of relevance for this Texan and football team. They're going to carry the ball a lot. And I think you could see a season where you know, let's say Daniels is the guy to start, is the guy to finish. I, he could have 1,010 yards, and then you could see Moss with 532 and Owens with 437. I mean, these numbers are going to be impressive. It's not going to be one guy. I've made my point that I think this offensive line is going to take a step forward this year. I think these guys are, have gotten a lot better in the offseason. And I think this scheme of the offense is going to work better for the offensive line, which is going to lead to more yards for the running backs. I think numbers like that where, you know, you see, like I said, 1,000 plus for somebody and then 600 plus for somebody and 400, 500 plus for somebody is realistic, potentially even more than that. So I think these three guys are going to be, well, first of all, I think they're going to be one of the better running back rooms in the SEC and potentially in the country. This is a great running back room of deep elite talent that I think is going to develop into a place where they're really good. I think Ruben Owens, I, I'm a guy, we talk about the, 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 the change of, you know, the change of speed when you come into the college game for running backs. I think that's a little different. I think it's more natural phenomenon of you can see the holes, you can make your cuts, you can, you can make guys miss or you can't, you know, it, it's, it's, it's just one of those things that comes natural more so than you can, I mean, you can work on it and get better at anything, but I believe Running back is one of the positions that is kind of more of a natural gift than some of the other positions on the football field. So I think a guy like Ruben Owens, who is a guy who sees the holes well, he can make the cuts he needs to. I think he's going to have a good year. I think he could come in and week one have a great performance for the Aggies. So I think Ruben Owens ends up being the guy, but all three of these guys are going to have a lot of use and a lot of production for Coach Petrino, Coach Petrino and this offense. So it'll be interesting to see how this dynamic, you know, it'll be, it'll be a fun conversation to have week seven, week eight, after we've kind of, or, you know, week four or five, after we've seen it a little bit and seeing how it looks to kind of see if this changes, it, who all is getting the work. So this run game is going to be fun and it's going to be elite under Coach Petrino. And I think you're going to see the Aggies run the rock a lot and run the rock effectively. Who are the best 15 players on Texas A&M's football team? We'll talk about that in a minute, but first I want to tell you about our friends over at Built Bar. Built Bar, not enough you, you can say positive about, about these Built Bars. 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, and 17 grams of protein. So, you know, 4 grams of sugar, not a lot of sugar, but a lot of protein. Enough protein to, you know, get you going for the day. They're, they're 100, covered 100% in chocolate. These bars, I'm telling you, they are delicious. I was always a guy who you tell me protein bar and it's like, oh, protein bar, darn. You know, I want a cupcake, of course, you know, but the reality is 
these protein bars taste good. And that's what I was just trying to say is, you know, you think a protein bar is a healthy snack and that that's not a fun snack or whatever you want to say. They are delicious. They're covered in chocolate. You have got to give Built Bar a try. I promise you're not going to regret it. These are some of the best protein bars I've ever had in my life. They're delicious. Now you can find them at Sam's Club. You can find them at Walmart. And, of course, you can find them over at Built.com. Please go give them a try. I promise you are not going to regret it. Aggies Wire put out a really interesting article that I love. They do a great job over there at Aggies Wire. You've got to go give them a read if you don't already. I'm sure everyone in here does. They're amazing. But they put out a list of who they think are the 15 best players on Texas A&M's roster going for the 2023 season. There's a few names missing and a few names on this list that I look at it and I'm kind of like, okay, I agree with 85% of this. There's a few guys I disagree with. Let's run through the list, and then I have five guys I think are in the conversation that could be on this list. Number 15, freshman offensive lineman, Mark Nabu. You know, great player. I'm excited to see what he's going to do this year. Um, I, but a lot of what I've seen and what I've read and what I've studied is I, I don't know how much of a role he's going to play for the Aggies in 2023. So he he's the first guy that I'm kind of like, he's going to be a great player. He's going to have a great career at Texas A&M. But I think there's a few guys you could have had on this list over him. Um, I hope he proves me wrong because, like I said, this offensive line is going to be a big key for the Aggies. So let's say he is a guy who does get the nod. He does start for the Aggies. He does work his way into the rotation. He becomes elite. He makes his football team better. Noah Thomas at number 14. I love Noah Thomas. We talked a lot about receivers the other day. I should have talked more about Noah Thomas. I'll be open about that. You know, I, I'm excited about him, but there's a couple of guys I think are going to be better. But Noah Thomas could be awesome for the Aggies. But he's one another one of the ones that I think you could have gone a different route. We'll get to that more at the end when I tell you the guys I think should be on this list. But Noah Thomas is going to be great. I think he could have a huge role for this team. Number 13, sophomore tight end Donovan Green. Donovan Green, Coach Trino loves utilizing tight ends. I think Donovan Green is going to be awesome. I think he's going to be just a beast he's going to help in, whether it's in the run game in, in the receiving game green's going to be awesome i'm really excited to see what he can do this year um and then amari daniels who we just got done talking about is number 12 on this list junior running back um we just talked about him i think he's going to start the season as the main guy and i think potentially he is going to be a guy who works his way in um who who is potentially taken over by reuben owens you know but at the end of the day, Daniels, I think, is going to start the season as the main running back. And even if Ruben Owens does overtake him as the guy, I think Amari Daniels is going to have a big role for this team. Then you got senior defensive back Damari Richardson. I'm ex or Damari Richardson, I apologize. Uh, I think he's going to have a good year. I think he's someone I'm ex that should be on this list. He's a great player. He's going to help out this football team. I think he's going to take a step forward this year. I'm really excited to see what this year looks like for him. Uh, you know, he's a guy I, I completely agree with. He, he needs to be on the top 15 list somewhere. Number 10 is senior offensive guard, Layden Robinson. Robinson, I think, is, is one of the reasons that I'm so high on this Aggie run game. I think he's going to take a step forward from last year. I think he's going to be great, and I think he helps tech, I think he helps give Wegman time, and I think he helps block for this running game that we just talked about to succeed. Then you got Ruben Fothry, same thing. As Robinson, both of these guys, I think, are going to have great seasons. Both of these guys are big reasons as to why I think this team is going to be great and this offense is going to be great. I'm excited for Fathery. I think he deserves to be on here, and I think he's going to prove why he's on here this season for the Aggies. Then, at number eight, you got grad, um, you know, last year guy, a tight end, Max Wright. Uh, Max, he was one of the interesting ones. I think Donovan Green might be a little bit more used in this offense. I think Max Wright is one of those guys who's higher on this list. I know he does a lot for the Aggies, and he's a great player, but I think there's a few guys you could have snuck on here before. If you all disagree, if you all think Max Wright is going to be a guy who is utilized a ton, let me know. I think he's going to be utilized, but I just think there's players that are going to be utilized more. Um, seven, we got... Bryce Anderson, defensive back, sophomore. I completely agree with this. I don't think there's any debate about that. He's a great player, and I think he's going to make this Aggie defense great, which already was. I, as I said the other day, 24-7 sports has Texas A&M's defense as the number seven overall defense in college football this season, and he's a big part of why. So 
After that, we got center sophomore Bryce Foster. Bryce Foster is a guy who many people believe could develop into a stud and be a guy down the road taken high in the NFL draft. Well, I'm hyper focusing on this offensive line. I think this offensive line, as I've been very clear, is going to take a step forward. And I think Foster is a big part of why. Number five, quarterback Connor Wegman. I don't think we need to even talk about this one. Super excited for Wegman. Super excited for what he's going to do this year. And he is completely deserving of this list. Then you got junior defensive lineman Shamir Turner. And right below him is sophomore defensive lineman Shamir Stewart. Both of these guys, once again, are going to just be dogs up front. I'm excited to see what they do. They're both deserving on this list. No debate here. And then you got two of those former 2022 guys that are elite in defensive lineman Walter Nolan and wide receiver Evan Stewart. You all have heard me talk about both of these guys. I'm really, really excited about both of these guys. I think Nolan and Stewart are going to be awesome. Um, I think I think Stewart, we already know what we have in Stewart. I think Nolan has a little bit more to prove, and I think Nolan is just going to be absolutely electric this year. Now, let's talk about five of the guys I think should have been on here. The first one who I've circled 100 times that I, I don't understand why he's not on here is Tyreek Chappelle. On three just released a list of their top 100 college football players in this season, and Chappelle was in, in the 90s on that list. And, of course, he was the only Aggie on that list. So to not have him as one of the 15 best players on the team I think is a little crazy. I think Chappelle is going to be awesome. I think he's going to have a great year, and I think he's going to be one of the better cornerbacks in the SEC this season. Ruben Owens. Now, this is another one of it's all speculation. He's a true freshman. We're just going to have to see it on the field, but I, you all know how much I like Ruben Owens. I'm putting him on this list. Talent-wise, I think he's one of the best 15 players on this team, and I think he's going to eventually prove that for the Aggies this season. Then I got two wide receivers who I talked about the other day, Anaya Smith, uh, Musa Muhammad. The Noah Thomas, Smith, and Muhammad debate is one that we could sit here and have all day. We know Stewart's the guy, but those three guys, the mix and match of those three guys is a great question. I saw a lot of your all's comments today, which I really appreciated talking about. Noah Thomas is a guy that we think is going to help. And that I agree with you guys. Great comments. I appreciate the feedback there. I think Noah Thomas and Muhammad and Smith are going to be guys who are going to help this team a lot. But it's interesting to see who are the main guys on the field, you know, on a week to week basis for the Aggies, getting receptions, getting targets, getting touchdowns, getting yards. Um, so I think Smith and Muhammad are two guys that you could argue should be on there. And then cornerback Tony Grimes, I think, is another one that you could argue should be on this list. Transfer from North Carolina. We talked a little bit about him last week as well. Uh, I'm excited for him. He had a great career at North Carolina, but I think he's going to kind of almost elevate his career this season in College Station. So I'm excited for Grimes. Now, I just gave you all five names I think should be uh, talked about on this list. I want you all to comment and let me know. Are there anybody, any players that I didn't mention, that they didn't mention, that you all think should at least be in the talk or potentially a top 15 player on this Texas a and football roster? So let me know what you all think. Um, but that's a fun article by Aggies Wire. They do a heck of a job over there. I love what they do. Go give them a read. Go give that article a read. It's an absolutely great article. Go give it a look. The Aggies baseball team Won their series in Starkville, leading to a berth in the NCAA tournament to come soon. We'll talk about that here in a minute. But first, I want to tell you about our friends over at FanDuel. Make a fast break over to FanDuel during the NBA playoffs. Because right now, new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's $1,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. So I love the FanDuel app. I love this no sweat first bet is a great concept. It makes you feel good about putting a bet on something because if, if it doesn't pay, if it hits, all right. If it doesn't hit, you get some more bets. It's a, it's a good all around idea. I love our friends over at FanDuel. I've been using the FanDuel Sportsbook for a really long time. I think they're great. Um, and then yeah, there's no better place to bet on playoff action than America's number one sportsbook. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Like I said, this no sweat first bet, go give it a check. Go check it out. It's a great idea and it's a potential win win for everybody. I think you all should go over to FanDuel, check that out. FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of the NBA. Yeah, the Aggies baseball team, they did it, folks. They did it. On Friday's episode, I was griping up a storm about that, that Friday 
um, that, that I'm sorry, that um, Thursday loss to Mississippi State where they had a lead in the ninth, in the going into the top of the ninth inning, and they blew that game. And I said, folks, now you have to win a series in games two and three to potentially get a berth in the NCAA tournament. Um, so the Aggies went 32 and 23 on the season, 14 and 16 in SEC play, which that's key. They were they lost the first game of the series in Starkville, eight to ten. It was a rough one. We talked about that one on Friday's episode. Walk off two run home run for the Bulldogs, painful. But then Lavalette said, "I am him, I am him," and hit three home runs, three home runs in game two, leading to a six four Aggie victory in Starkville. Lampkin shoved on the mound. It was a great all-around team win. I, I I don't know how else to how else to to say it. This was a great win, tied the series, and then once this news came out, I said, okay, the Aggies are going to win this game. What happened next was, and I think this is a little bit a little bit comical almost, but is Mississippi State was eliminated from the SEC tournament. Of course, if you don't make the SEC tournament, your chances of making the NCAA tournament are Kapoof out the window, Dunzo. I had a feeling that Mississippi State was not going to come out strong after that news broke. Um, Just because, you know, it's hard to be motivated to go play a game when you know your season's done after it regardless. And that ended up being the case. The Aggies win 15-10 to in a classic uh, series finale in the SEC where you got your into your bullpen guys, a lot of runs, a lot of home runs, a lot of fun there. Will Johnson had a great outing for the Aggies, 4.2 innings, one earned run, seven Ks. Uh, Werner was great, two bombs for the Aggies. And, you know, they, of course, win that game 15-10, setting themselves up in the SEC tournament to start off the SEC tournament in Hoover against Tennessee. Seven versus 10. It's going to be a fun game. I think the Aggies can compete. What Now, I want to break down how this works here with, with the postseason. The statistics on if you get to 14 conference wins, your chances of making the NCAA tournament are are high. In the SEC, of course, that is. So winning that series with the winning the final two games gets the Aggies to that ever so important 14 win mark to where they're going to be playing in the postseason. That's very exciting. Then you break down the fact that you you want the Aggies to win a game in Hoover because then if you win your opening game, you move on to the double elimination. It gives you a chance to go on a run, win another game. You win a couple games in, in Hoover, your seeding in the NCAA tournament is going to increase a ton. Um, I think this is going to be a big ball game against Tennessee on Tuesday. The time I, I I'm, you know, it's not good to give a time yet because it's kind of going to be to be determined. The first game's early in the morning. That game, there's rain in Hoover every dang year. There's long games, extra innings. every. So it's just it's the second game of the day. However long the first game takes, we'll just have to see. Um, but heck of a job by the Aggies baseball team. They pulled it together. They got the job. I didn't think it was going to happen. I'm going to be honest. When Mississippi State was fighting for their chances to make the NCAA, or I'm sorry, to make the SEC tournament, and they and they uh, went out and won game one, I said, I, I think the Aggies are going to drop this game, and if they don't get to 14 wins, your chances of making the tournament drop significantly. So you still have a chance at 13 wins, but it's not very high. Um, so I, I think the key to what I'm saying here is heck of a job by this baseball team to go and win two straight games, win a series after you lost a painful one the game the day before, thanks to a walk-off homer. It was just it's a great weekend of Aggie baseball, and it really proves to you, hey, this team is here, this team is, is legit, and this team could potentially make a run in the tournament. I've said it, if, if SEC teams can just get into the postseason, they can make a run. It, it's a fact. It's an established fact. I mean, look at what Ole Miss did last year. They just snuck in and won the whole dang thing. So um, Texas A&M, I think, is going to be a team that could make a run in the tournament. But a good starting point is winning game one of the SEC tournament against Tennessee. It's going to be a fun game. I'm excited. That's Tuesday. We'll talk about it after it happens. That And and um, hopefully the Aggies can pull out a big win and move into the double elimination part of the SEC baseball tournament. 
That is going to do it for today's Locked On Aggies. I'm your host, Andrew Stefaniak. You can follow me on Twitter at Andrew Stefaniak. And um, on the show, you can follow on Twitter at Locked On Aggies. I've taken over that account. I'm putting out little tidbits here and there. I made a little comment, you know, after the baseball game saying, hey, we're going to talk about that. I'll, I'll kind of allude to, hey, we're going to talk about this um, on this day when, when Texas A&M sports news pops. So you all should follow the show. You all should follow me on Twitter. I'd appreciate that a ton. That's going to do it for today's Locked On Aggies, like I said. And we will see you tomorrow. Have a great rest of your day.